Hello everybody, welcome back to Markers and Monsters. As always, I will be your humble DM for the day, Colin. And uh, today we are taking a, I'm going to talk a little bit about fantasy art and uh, my love for that and D&D &D and fantasy movies like Conan and stuff like that. I thought uh, after Drawloween, you know, it would be a nice time to uh, get back into doing some things that, um, I don't know, aren't necessarily horror related as it were, but still draw some cool art and uh, talk about some things I love. So let's get right into it. So I honestly, when I sat down to draw this, I had no game plan, no idea what I was going to do or anything like that. I just said, hey, you know, I'm in kind of a fantasy mood. Uh, I just started playing D&D &D again after a couple year hiatus. So um, me and my friends are playing some uh, fifth edition. So I don't know, maybe I just had like a fantasy on the brain and just thought, hey, what the heck, guys, I'll do it. So here we are today, and as you can see, I'm kind of drawing this like robed uh, cultist woman with, uh, she's got horns on her head. I don't know if she is a tiefling or I don't know, some kind of weird elf thing or whatever, but uh, either way, there she is. And then I'm putting in this like fantasy castle behind her. Again, pretty simple. I know that for the first episode back, I should be going all out and going just hog wild with this, but um, I decided to keep it kind of simple and... Uh, just have fun with it and do some cool art. Now, I will say this real quick uh, channel update. I think I have decided upon a bi-weekly schedule. So doing the Halloween while it was a lot of work, was a ton of fun. And um, having done these videos, I think I can edit more and just kind of play around and do some more stuff. So I'm going to try to stick to a uh, Sunday-Wednesday schedule. So hopefully... Hopefully I'll be able to keep to that and we can we can do some cool art. But uh, yeah, that's just it. Quick update for the channel there. So uh, as you can see, the sketch is already put in here. And I'm drawing in a night sky. Surprise, surprise. Spoiler alert, I'll be putting in stars with a white paint pen later in the episode. Woohoo, so stick around for that. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying earlier, I, I've loved uh, like fantasy art and stuff for a very long time. Um, I would say even that that might have been my one of my first loves, uh, more so than than horror art. So I know it's kind of blasphemous to say, but um, when I was growing up, I was a huge fan of things like uh, Conan the Barbarian, um, Dungeons and Dragons, which I mentioned. Uh, Boris Vallejo, fantasy artist, he has been my favorite uh, or one of them since forever, and I would always get his calendars. As a teenager, usually not so, not so much as a, as a very young adolescent because uh, some of his stuff can be a little risque. But um, yeah, big fan, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him on uh, a couple of occasions. Not Nothing major, but just to say like, hey, I love your art and, and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, great fantasy artist and uh, really inspiring to me, especially when I was, was a kid. Um, now I started to get involved with playing D and D and like fantasy role playing and stuff like that. Uh, I would say that the, that journey for me really started uh, with the game Hero Quest. If any of you uh, '90s kids out there remember that, uh, it was released by Milton Bradley in the early early days of the '90s. And uh, it's more of a board game, but you have like an elf, a barbarian, a dwarf character, and someone is the uh, dungeon master, as it were, who controls all the monsters and, and moves them around. And you kind of tell this adventure story, it comes with a booklet with all these different adventure scenarios. So uh, less role playing, more of a board game, but it still gets you kind of into that sort of a thing. Um, that was really my first experience with that kind of a thing. And again, the artwork on the cover of Hero Quest is is amazing. With that barbarian and fighting off a bunch of skeletons and orcs and stuff. Amazing. Anyway, uh, from there, I really loved those styles of board games. And they, in the early 90s, there were a lot of them. Uh, Dark World was really fun. Tower of the Wizard King was uh, a little bit different, but still a cool game. Um, the Dungeons and Dragons adventure board games they had. After a while, though, I kind of started to get into playing D&D proper, as it were. And now the uh, first D&D stuff I have were, was uh, second edition stuff. So that's Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, second edition. And I remember once at my mall, KB Toys was going out of business, or they were reducing inventory or something, but they had all these D&D modules and uh, stuff like that, and in 
D&D parlance. So a module is like a box with adventures and maps and stuff like that in it, a scenario that you play. But they had all these things that were going on sale. And I think at the time they were about two bucks each, these these box sets that fetch upwards of 40 bucks on eBay now. And, you know, I bought a couple and in hindsight, I'm like, damn, I wish I would have got all of them, every single last one of them. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of started there. And with second edition, um, the rule set was not very, uh, it wasn't good for 12 year olds, if, if that makes sense. Like you would, I think you'd need some, a kid that's a little bit older that knew what they were doing uh, or, an, you know, an adult that could really understand these very almost convoluted rules to get into it. I mean, once you know what you're doing, it's a lot easier and it's a very fun system, but uh, it's hard to initially get the grasp of what's going on. But even still, kind of gave the uh, idea of, you know, role-playing this fantasy world and stuff like that. Uh, so that was always really fun. And then where I think I would really have started role-playing was uh, third edition, and uh, that that edition, I played that a ton. That's the D20 system, and uh, those editions use like pretty much every action you do. You roll a 20-sided dice, add a modifier to it. Like if your strength modifier is you know plus four, you roll a 20-sided die, add four to the number, and that'll determine if you like kick down a door or something like that. So um, yeah, that system is very prominent today. And fifth edition, which I'm playing now pretty much uses the d20 system there there's different rules and spells and, and things like that to make the additions a little bit different but that's the gist of it and so playing in these like fantastical environments and stuff like that uh, always it was a game that always got my imagination just running so right now i'm the dm that's that's what i've done forever that's the guy who controls all the monsters and tells the story and and you know, is the arbiter of the rules or arbitrator of the rules and stuff like that. Um, so that that's what I like because it's the very it's a very creative part of the game. Um, but yeah, so D and D, big big fan of that. Uh, my father, I know, was a big Lord of the Rings fan back in the day, and uh, that's something that I read a couple of years ago. I never actually read the whole thing cover to cover in like a single go, and I think I read it in like two days or something like that. So that was that was really good to get into. Uh, I've also been a huge fan of Conan the Barbarian, Robert E. Howard's creation, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit more in a, another video at length, because I got a lot to say about Conan. Uh, not that I don't have a lot to say about Dungeons and Dragons, but um, I figure for the purpose of this video, we'll just keep it a, a brief talk. <clears throat> Pardon me. But yeah, there, there were tons of fantasy things. I had cable growing up, and I had the station TBS the Turner Broadcasting System, or uh, the Beastmaster Station, because they showed Beastmaster on that channel more times than is good for anybody. But anytime it was on, I'd watch it. That's a cool one where Mark Singer uh, fights with swords and he has animals to help him out, like a hawk and a tiger and some ferrets that steals chicks' clothing when they're bathing. Great movie. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, so there were tons of fantasy movies when I was growing up. Willow was another good one with uh, Warwick Davis and Val Kilmer. Really cool movie. Uh, Legend with Tom Cruise where uh, Tim Curry is that the darkness. He's that big devil that tries to steal a unicorn's horn to gain immortality or some crazy stuff. I don't know. But uh, again, great movie. And, and this stuff really inspired me. Uh, really inspired my art and just my imagination and stuff like that. And uh, while it wasn't too long, probably about first grade when I really, really got into the horror stuff hardcore, um, fantasy has always been, you know, something in my life that I've just loved and enjoyed. But hey, let's take a look at the scan now. I'm ranting and rolling too long here. And uh, yeah, I don't even know what this girl is. She's just some demon cultist chick and there's a castle in the background and it doesn't need to make sense. It's just kind of cool. And I hope you guys think it is too. And thank you for letting me rant about D&D and stuff like that for a while. Uh, here's all my social media stuff up for you. I started Instagram. And I'd also urge you to check out my Etsy shop because uh, a lot of stuff is now up there, including some of the artwork that are on these videos that I haven't sold yet. So check it out. Uh, maybe you'll get a one-of-a-kind piece. I don't know. they make a great gift. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. We'll see you uh, next uh, coming up here on Wednesday for another great episode of Markers and Monsters. Oh.